Welcome to Bible 180, Judges. All the commitment Moses and Joshua preached had flown out the window. The Israelites failed to drive out their enemies and a pattern quickly emerges. Israel sins. Their enemies oppress them. They cry out to God for help. The Lord sends them judges to rescue them. The Spirit of the Lord regularly enables judges to do impressive deeds they couldn't without God's help. Then the people revert to idolatry, adultery, and selfish living. It starts with Othniel, son of Caleb, and he defeats Aram. Then the Moabites ruled over Israel, enter Ehud. While delivering tribute, Ehud pretends to have a secret message for the obese king Eglon. When they are in private, he pulls out a sword that he was able to hide because he's left-handed and he drives it through Eglon. The king is so fat, the sword gets stuck. The servants assume the king is in the bathroom and wait patiently while Ehud escapes and rallies the troops. When the Canaanites oppress them, Deborah leads Israel. The general Barak won't go to war without Deborah's help. She prophesies a woman will get the glory. When the enemy commander Sisera flees, Jael pretends to offer him refuge, but instead she drives a tent peg through his forehead while he sleeps. Deborah sings a catchy little girl power ditty that quickly takes over the airwaves. Of course, the girl power traces its origins to Yahweh's power, but still. Next, Gideon reluctantly confronts the Midianites. Eventually, he defeats the Midianites with the little theatrics and a lot of Yahweh's help. Some of Israel refuses to help Gideon, and Gideon is overly vindictive. Worse, Gideon makes an idol which Israel starts worshiping. Abimelech is a gangster who kills the sons of Gideon and gains power for a time, but is defeated by a woman dropping a millstone on him. Next, Israel turns to Jephthah. He challenges Moab, brags on Yahweh, and wins the victory, but there's a tragic misunderstanding. Jephthah assumes Yahweh is like other gods, so he sacrifices his daughter to pay Yahweh off. Samson doesn't shave or drink, but he does just about everything else. He kills a lion, strikes down a thousand Philistines with the jawbone, of a donkey and absconds with the city gates on his back. Eventually, because of compromising with compromising women, his strength is compromised. Yahweh gives Samson strength to bring down the house on a party of Philistine leaders worshiping their god, Dagon. The last stories are the worst. Forget about outsiders. Israel is now so depraved they have to be saved from themselves. There's really just bad guys and slightly less bad guys. There's sexual abuse, betrayal, civil war, and kidnapping. The promised land has become a dystopia. Israel is wildly out of control, completely indistinguishable from the surrounding nations. Heroes are needed, but it's clear by the end of this book, these heroes are turning into villains. Shockingly, while God reprimands Israel, he keeps coming primarily to save them not to judge them. The book closes saying, in those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as he saw fit. Yahweh was supposed to be king, but Israel had forgotten. What Israel really needs is a man after Yahweh's own heart.